Jesus and his disciples set out for the villages of Caesarea Philippi. Along the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They said in reply, John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others one of the prophets. And he asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter said to him in reply, You are the Christ. Then he warned them not to tell anyone about him. He began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer greatly and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed and rise after three days. He spoke this openly. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. At this he turned around and, looking at his disciples, rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The version that St. Mark gives us of this important episode in the life of Jesus is completed by the other synoptic gospels after Peter's confession. You are the Messiah. Jesus says to Peter, And I tell you that no one of flesh and blood has revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven has revealed it to you. And so I say to you, until then he was called Simon. That was his name. And I say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. The confession of the divinity of Jesus said in that way in which Peter expressed it, perhaps it was not yet an explicit confession. We had to wait for the resurrection for it. But it was already a greater confession than what people thought. You are the Messiah. It is the confession of the divinity of Jesus that makes Peter the vicar of Christ, that makes him become Peter, then Saint Peter. Therefore, the key will be in the confession of divinity. We must never forget it, because confessing the divinity of Christ is not only, that is to say, Christ is God, true God and true man. No one doubted that he was true man. The doubt could even be the scandal. It could be in considering him to be man, considerable also God. Confession in the divinity of Jesus means, I insist, because it is today's problem. It means that the words of Christ are the words of God. He said, Heaven and earth will pass away. My words will not pass away. The teachings of Christ are the teachings of God. No man, no pope, no bishop, no theologian, no one can say that these words of Christ any of them are words that have to be changed. No one has power in the Catholic Church over Jesus Christ. I know that for some people, saying this makes them very nervous because they think that the Pope is the owner of the message or that the bishop or the priest is the owner of the message and it is not true. The Pope, the bishop, the priest, the catechist are not the owners of the message. We are not the owners of the message, but the servants of the message. We are not above Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is not our inferior. Why is this so difficult to understand? Jesus Christ is not our inferior. Jesus Christ is our superior. Jesus Christ is God, and we are not gods. Please, the Pope is not God. The Bishop is not God. And the priest, of course, starting with me, we are not gods. Christ is God. We must confess faith in the divinity of Christ, with the obvious and immediate consequence that his words will not pass away, that his words are not words of man that are pushed by the passing of history or by new discoveries. They are words of God. His words will not pass away. And to claim that Jesus is outdated 
and that his words, some of them, or all of them, just one of his teaching would suffice, are outdated teachings, that they have to be changed, means manifestly denying the divinity of Jesus Christ. But this gospel also tells us what happens next. The Lord, says the evangelist, begins to speak to them very clearly, says the text. He began to instruct them very clearly. He explained it to them very clearly, very clearly. He begins to say, The Son of Man has to be crucified because he has to pay the price of blood to redeem man. He has to be crucified. But he is going to rise again. I believe that with a feeling of love and affection, the gospel says that Peter began to rebuke him. That is to say that he became strange. He became angry. He began to rebuke him. And he said to him, This cannot happen to you. That cannot happen to you. You cannot die. You are not going to die crucified. He began to rebuke him. And we do not know if then he told him, in addition, some plan to flee. In short, whatever it was, he began to rebuke him. And you cannot die on the cross. I am convinced that this abrupt reaction, even violent rebuke, at least strong, this reaction was moved by love for Jesus, and I would surely have done the same. But no, no Lord, no, 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 you cannot die on the cross. It is impossible, not only because if you are God, how can you die on the cross? But because I do not want you to die on the cross, not even for me, no, I do not want you to die on the cross. Jesus confronts him and the gospel says that he also rebukes him. That is, he confronts him, he confronts St. Peter openly, unworthily. But it goes further and this is the surprise. After having said to him, You are Peter, because this confession of my divinity, perhaps not entirely, but well, of messiahship, it should be said, the Holy Spirit has revealed it to you, and that you are Peter. You are the stone on which I will build my church. After having given him this position of authority over the others, he says to Peter himself, After a few minutes or a few hours, he says, Get away from me, Satan. You think like men and not like God. In other words, Peter is Peter, or rather, Simon becomes Peter when they confess his divinity of Jesus and also when he continues to believe in the divinity of Jesus. In those moments when Jesus is persecuted by the world, crucified, the world then being the Jewish priest, the Roman Empire represented by Pontius Pilate, that is to say, when Jesus Christ suffers the consequences of his confrontation with the world, he suffers them because they lead him to the cross. Although it will have a redemptive sense, also then you have to confess the divinity of Christ. Simon is Peter when he confesses the divinity of the Lord, and when does he confess it? When Christ is being attacked by the world, when Christ confronts the world with the price even of the death of the cross. That is a great teaching. Simon is Peter because he continues to believe in the divinity of Jesus when the world is attacking Christ. That is Simon Peter when he defends the teachings of Christ, even though they are not in agreement with the world. The bishop is a bishop when he does that. The priest is a priest when he does that, defending Christ. Truly, the bishop or the priest is a sacrament that is forever, but he is playing the role of priest. He is playing the role of bishop. He is playing the role of pastor. He is exercising when he is at Christ's side always. And especially, that is when Christ needs him most, when Christ our Lord. The teachings of Christ our Lord is under attack by the world. To put it bluntly, he is a bishop or a priest or a catechist when God comes first and God's teachings come first and then political correctness and if at any time political correctness 
what the world commands does not coincide with the teachings of Christ. Christ first, and if that means persecution for Christ, it did and they killed him. And if it means persecution for those who say Christ first and Christ's teachings first, may God give me the strength to climb the cross and share with him also the cross that he suffered. Because if we die with him, since Paul will say, we will live with him and rise with him. But if we deny him, we have no hope for eternal life with him. I confess the divinity of Christ and I confess it especially when they attack him because they say his teachings are outdated and not what the world wants to hear. What the world, they say, needs when they are not politically correct. I would rather be with Christ than with the world. And may God give me the strength to go all the way in this decision. May he give strength to each one of us. Amen.